Hello and welcome back to Rhea's Streaming Vlog, the show where I talk about my experiences as a streamer and content creator of the past six and a half years, maybe make you laugh, hopefully make you think, and provide some stories, thoughts, and insights that I hope will serve you well as a content creator, or maybe also assist in whatever endeavors you may have, whether that be streaming, content creation, or something else entirely. As I typed this video and recorded, it, it's Saturday, September 4th, and this past Wednesday the 1st, Many streamers chose to participate in a protest that I've seen referred to with the hashtag a day off Twitch with the stated objectives of number one, raising awareness of hate raids going around on Twitch. I was the victim of one such raid, if you want to hear my story, and immediate call to action. I made a video about that, which I will link here on the video and in the description box down below. Number two, generate some negative publicity towards Twitch and Amazon to attempt to provide some pressure to take the problem of hate raids seriously. That is to say, to work to create more tools and mechanisms to help creators better protect themselves from these insidious actors. And number three, standing in solidarity with the victims of said raid. Personally, I did not participate in the event for the most part, despite being a victim myself. I didn't stream that day, but I typically don't stream on Wednesdays anyway, but I also didn't really make any strong attempt to avoid watching other streamers on Twitch on that day either. There are, as far as I can tell, already some videos out there about the, why the protests and boycotts supposedly won't work, and I'm sure that there are also resources being compiled about what effects, if any, the boycott ended up having overall. But that's not what this video is going to be about. Rather, I want to talk about something a lot more general. I want to talk about the concept of allyship. I want to talk about what makes a good ally versus what makes a less than ideal ally. For those who might not know, I'm transgender. Uh, I've also been formally diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder, and I've spent a lot of time working in the social justice and advocacy sphere, though I have pulled back from that a fair bit due to my own obligations and also just because I need to set some boundaries for myself in order to protect my mental health. I think these tips will be pretty valuable to anyone who wants to be an ally, though I know some of these might be controversial. If you disagree with me, or you think I left something important out, or you just flat out think I'm wrong, please leave a comment down in the video and we can maybe have some dialogue on the topic. I might make a follow-up video if there's enough interest. So without further ado, here are what I believe to be four traits that make a good ally of a social justice movement. Number one. A good ally always attempts to amplify and uplift the voices of the marginalized community in question. A poor ally, in contrast, wants to speak for and drown out those voices. Part of the reason I was very tepid about the protest and didn't really participate is that as a victim myself, I did not really feel like my voice was well heard or even taken into consideration when individuals I know and interact with regularly were deciding whether or not to participate. I saw a number of creators who claimed to stand in supposed solidarity with the affected creators, but I didn't have anyone really come to offer or to uplift my voice or share my story, which I think is just super important if you're trying to be a strong and effective advocate. If the actual victims aren't having their voices heard, then it's just trading one form of being silenced for another. Number two, a good ally respects that they will never be able to fully understand the experience that marginalized individuals and communities go through. A poor ally, in contrast, assumes that they know better. A poor ally thinks that they know what a marginalized community needs more than the community itself does. I was watching a video, I think it was an episode of Legal Eagle about grading shows through legal realism. And in the show that he was commenting about, there was a pretty profound line that has stuck with me to this day where a white protagonist says to a black supporting character, the only thing I know about being black in America is that I don't know anything about being black in America, which the black character gives a nod of approval. And, and, and that's so true. I'm, I'm as white as the Pillsbury Doughboy, and I don't want to harbor any delusions whatsoever that I will ever know what black people have to go through, just as I hope that those of you who are straight and cisgender don't harbor the illusions that you understand the experience that I have as somebody who's neither of those things. Going hand in hand with that, number three, a good ally will allow the marginalized and victimized groups to take a leading role in their own advocacy. A poor ally attempts to focus on their own visibility. This concept of leading from behind comes up in military ventures, but I also think it's super critical in advocacy work as well. By allowing members of the groups being victimized or marginalized to take a central role in the fight against said oppression, a good ally will provide support to empower the marginalized group 
rather than trying to serve as a savior figure or crowding out the voices of the marginalized communities. As someone who's transgender, I would definitely be pretty skeptical of a pride organization that's all run and operated by the cishet population. And as a more concrete, definitive example, within the autistic rights and advocacy community, there's a lot of distaste or outright hostility towards a certain organization, whose name I will not dignify, which is known for being particularly bad at allowing the autistic community a voice or central role in their organization and whose messaging and advocacy efforts, even though they may be noble in intent, are very misguided. Number four, a good ally acts selflessly in the pursuit of a greater justice. A poor ally attempts to publicize their exploits and use the identities and voices of marginalized groups for personal gain. Read from the future here, and after discussing the topic of this video, and some of my thoughts with some other people uh, since the time of recording this video, I've realized that I don't necessarily agree with the example that I had when I originally recorded this video yesterday. So in light of that, what I will say on the topic of exploiting the identity of marginalized community for personal gain, look to the example of companies that come out with their pride logos in the month of june to celebrate pride month but then immediately put them away as soon as we hit july 1 and pride month is over or look at any number of networks companies media companies outlets etc that use or seem to use the identities of marginalized communities put them up on a pedestal to show an example of inclusivity and then turn around and do very little, if nothing at all, to actually benefit marginalized communities. I'm not going to name any names, but I'm sure that you have uh, at least some examples that you can think of. Back to you, Pastoria. So there we have it. Four tips for being an ally in whatever social justice movement you may find yourself a part of, according to some random lady on the internet that most people probably never even heard of. If you've enjoyed the video, please consider giving it a like to help spread awareness. Let me know what I missed down in the comments, and until next time, um, stay hydrated, my friends.